It's a, I, like, yeah. I like the progressive stat, Greg, if we could use that. Too. And can you explain it to those who maybe aren't familiar? Sure. So if you've got a uh, question or comment on an agenda item, if you'll put your name in stack as we're discussing, that way, uh, Yvonne, are you going to run stack if I'm facilitating? I'm happy to stack it up. That way, uh, Yvonne, when it's your turn to talk, she's going to call on you. And a progressive stack means if uh, Liv or uh, – who else is on the call? It, priority goes to minority voices or people of color voices. And uh, so, Randy, you might put in stack first. But Liv follows you up. She might call on Liv before she does you. That makes sense. We give priority to new people too. Yeah, right. And if you haven't said anything the whole meeting and, and you go in stack, we're gonna, we'll move you up. Does that apply to gender too? Uh, the way we've run it at the, I don't know, Yvonne. Does that, we didn't run it that way necessarily, uh, female specific. But I think, you know, given the crowd we have here today, do we need to give the, uh, White lady to the lead on stack. <laughs> You're gonna take it anyways, right? <laughs> You're talking about Vaughn. <laughs> exactly. I'm just calling the shot. She gets to decide who. I do wanna. I, I would like to take the privilege to say that we want to change one thing slightly in the in the agenda. Hmm. And that is new teachers will be in not no pension, but I guess you, I don't know if you want to call it half, they'll be in a hybrid plan. Okay. So okay. it's half 401k and half, I need to, uh, I sent a copy of that to Chris Toby, incidentally. And yeah, we didn't get him on our call. Uh, I invited him again. Yeah, it's just I'm gonna beard him in his lair. He, He's got to take a look at that. I, you know, somebody's grifting, or they wouldn't be pushing for it. So, so right. Uh, do we want to throw out to this group, Yvonne, a little bit of what we talked about, a potential? Yes. Um, uh, let's let's wait till number four comes up, though. You know, because that's the natural place to bring it up. I'm thinking. No, absolutely. I just didn't know if we needed to add it to the agenda. So, Gay, we talked about, per what we heard from uh, Kumar last week, we need to draft a resolution is what we feel and send it into JCTA and, and hear the discussion, at least. And, and what, what parts of the resolution did the, does the group have problems with? Who's in what corner? And push for what we need to be asking for. We were talking a little bit before you hopped on, Randy said he, he missed uh, Bill Dynas's uh, voice over at uh, Manual just because we don't have a lot of people speaking out for what needs to be spoken out for. And a resolution would be one way to do it. Right. Get people on record. I mean, and that's what uh, Kumar said. Use the tools. It's a tool that exists. We should use it. We should use every single tool, though, not just one or the other, all of the above. So what was first on the agenda, Kay? Oh, is my screen share not going? No, you're, I'm seeing your, uh, you're not, I'm seeing the message you're sending. Oh, sorry. How embarrassing. <laughs> I That's, see Lois Weiner. The curtain has been uh, drawn, huh? You see Lois Weiner. Yeah, on Facebook or Twitter oh, is what I saw. Facebook page. I got gotcha. you. I was screen sharing, and I guess I just went over to Facebook and screen shared that too. No, I don't care. Can I back up and ask Liv? Liv, you're our student representative, right? Can you give remind yep. me? 
Oh, um, I am a senior at DuPont Manual. I am also the outreach editor on Manual Red Eye. Um, as far as background goes. Um, Are you looking I at school next year? Oh, um, I am looking to go out of state for school and major in communications. So pretty much every um, top school for communications majors I pretty much apply to. Um, but that's the plan and I will let you guys know how that turns out. No, if you need a Thank you. reference. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know if, how well you know Gay and Yvonne, uh, Randy and Lib, but I'll go ahead and reintroduce myself a little more. Uh, I uh, have been teaching in JCPS for uh, 14 years uh, and uh, have been a long time advocate for social and racial justice and involved with more uh, groups than I need to be in that arena locally and uh, currently at uh, teaching special ed with the uh, fifth and sixth grade uh, emotional behavior disability students at Waller Williams. Yvonne, do they all know you? Oh, I'm not worth knowing, frankly. Oh, whatever. But... <laughs> I might be able to help you live. I was formerly with the Associated Press if you need anything from me. And I teach Spanish at Wilder. That's pretty boring. I mean, no, it's fun, but you know, I'm a boring person. And Liv, you already know uh, Dr. Week, right? Yeah, I took Dr. Week's class last year. <laughs> <laughs> she was a student until March 13th. Yes, very, very true. At least you can do something via high school uh, through <laughs> online learning, much more than. Well, and I think Randy was being a little bit modest when, uh, or, or brief maybe is probably a better term, when he was telling you some of his background, Greg. Um, he also ran for JCTA president and KEA president in his uh past and he has uh, been challenging uh, the pension, the shortcomings of the pension funding for, I don't know, almost a decade. And he started an organization. Since 2013, really, I brought it up. Uh, we had a meeting with Brent McKim and a number of teachers at uh, JCTA headquarters uh, in the fall of 2013 and uh, were basically brushed off at that point, even though the funding for the pension had fallen to something around the mid 50s and since then it's gone down to the 40s and even as low as 35 percent when 80 percent is considered by pension experts such as chris toby 80 percent and below uh, to be technically insolvent so we currently have the lowest funded teacher defined benefit pension in the country and even illinois is higher than we are. You have to go to Puerto Rico to get somebody who's worse off than us. I'm, yes, <laughs> I'm familiar with the story and I appreciate you taking a turn. And two terms, right? Uh, that That's your other, I thought you were a one trick pony, but apparently you've got two tricks. Speaking to me? Yes, yes. Weren't you the big advocate for uh, uh, one term or a uh, limp term? Oh. Oh my goodness, we had term limits. We had term limits. There were always two terms and that was it. And that's why they're up until we get to Brent McKim, there is a succession of JCTA presidents. And then since 2001, there's only been one president. And that's because uh, that family in the sort of Cosa Nostra sense that currently runs JCTA muscled through the board of directors a change in the bylaws to allow a person to continue to run forever. So we've had a president for life since 2001. And concomitantly, at the same time, we've lost our defined pension benefit, uh, defined pension benefit because there's been no defense of it. And in the, um, as it, as it kept sinking um, down into the 50s and then the 40s, an article came out by Matt Taibbi um, in Rolling Stone about this um, 
it's going on across the country, but how Kentucky and Illinois stood out as being um, egregious examples of pension theft. And uh, that caught my attention. And at that time, I tried to bring it up to our current leadership and uh, essentially been uh, labeled a rogue or um, ostracized since that point because it undermines the uh, power base of the current leadership, which, as we know from last meeting, um, appoints 10 of 12 positions to the uh, PAC, which is very powerful, this Better Schools Kentucky, and then um, Kentucky Family Values that was run by Greg Stumbo for a number of years, um, very much under the um, um, influence of the current family that runs JCTA, and they also have been able to um, guide, if you will, KEA, because KEA is dependent on the largest teacher union in the state for much of its funding. So that is the, um, as I see it, the corruption uh, that has prevented us from mounting a solid defense against pension theft. There are billions of dollars at stake, and the one thing these pension raiders don't want and this is what I found out in one of the three lawsuits that I found is transparency. They do not want to reveal the fees. They do not want to reveal uh, the percentages of the profits that they're taking. They hope that teachers and uh, the other funds that they prey upon are not paying attention. In fact, pension money um, in this country amounts to some three to four trillion dollars. And it is known in Wall Street circles as dumb money. That is not my term. That is the term that is used in the, in the PBS Frontline documentary. On Wall Street, it's known as dumb money because the pensioners are very busy. They don't pay attention. They assume that there are watchdogs and uh, they've been mistaken in that. And the one organization that really should be watching over this one benefit, because healthcare is not worth a squat, for teachers, frankly, it's very expensive. Um, the salaries are very low. The one benefit we do have is the defined benefit, meaning you get a certain amount every month when you retire. That's the one benefit we have, and that has not been protected mm -hmm. in this state by JCTA. And I have my suspicions as to why the leadership has been so passive, but um, they're not a very friendly estimation of the current leadership's integrity. So I'll spare you uh, the specifics on that. But the um, pension has been simply raided, underfunded, and preyed upon by Wall Street money managers to, this, to the point where it's now at 35 or 40 percent, which is considered dead or frankly technically insolvent. And that is why the legislature is proposing this golden stake through the heart of what's left of the pension because once well, you cut the only off thing you, we can do right i mean right you know we can't, we've got this scarcity. it's unsustainable we've we've damaged it so badly uh, it's going to die so we might as well kill it right now and put the new hires into this uh, hybrid plan which well, we're definitely, i'm sorry we did oh, i'm finished get to this on the agenda. On and on. Uh, i've been at this since 2013 i can tell you about the dirty details if you want but that's the basis of um my a activism and the reason for it we want to include we definitely want to include at least one if not several uh pension uh resolutions and our pension uh problems and resolutions in the uh draft JCTA. Um, Jen and Tyra, glad you're here. Do you mind uh, in just taking a minute and introducing yourself? I, I wish I knew you better than I do. I know you're an author. Are you talking about me, Jen? <laughs> yes, yes, you, Jen. I am an author. Okay. Hi, I'm Jen Spalding. I am an author. I'm a retired teacher. And um, Randy, my daughter goes to Manual. I don't know if you know her or not. Malia Spalding, that's my daughter. Um, so I am now a children's book author and I've written, I've just came out with my fourth book and my books are about sensory issues and uh, 
Books, um, Speech Delight. That's what my daughter had. So each book is about a different sensory issue. And I am, um, my husband and I just recently had COVID and I'm recovering oh from that. And uh, God is good on that one. All the time. All right. Uh, do you mind dropping in the chat a link to, if we wanted to check out one of your books, how would I go about uh, finding that online and ordering it? Do you, do you mind dropping that link in the chat? Oh, not at all. Thank you for your interest. Appreciate it. I, uh, well, my background's elementary ed uh, for the most part, but uh, I, I'm also a special educator and and so, and, and very sensory conscious in the classroom. So sounds. Right. And, and I will say, I, I taught elementary school as well. And I was totally unaware. I mean, until my daughter had this issue. And I don't know, I know, I realize now that we all have some type of sensory issue, but you know, I tell people just as long as it's not taking over your life, then, you know, I mean, some people can't stand to see, you know, the tag in the back of their shirt or the nails on the chalkboard, or they don't like to see their, their food touching, but they could go ahead and eat it, you know, or they can go ahead and wear the shirt. But some people that have extreme sensory issues wouldn't be able to wear that shirt. You know, it would be a problem until they took their shirt off. So I just really want people to be more aware of sensory issues. So that's what I'm doing. One book at a time. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm, every, uh, every year I learn as much from my kids as I do, or they do me. So uh, there, there's a lot of interesting stuff. I agree. Uh, probably everybody does have some sort of sensory uh, issue. Tyra, do you mind introducing yourself to the group? Glad yes, you. I'm Tyra Walker, co-chair of uh, the Kentucky Alliance. Can y'all hear me? Because I'm muffled. I'm, I'm, I'm someplace I got to keep my mask on. Hold on, I'll take it off right here. Hold on, take it halfway I can off. hear you. Uh, Tyra Walker, the co-chair of the Kentucky Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression. Also uh, serve as the recording secretary for JCPA, and I was listening to Randy and uh, that would be an issue that I would like to uh, hold JC, do our pension, hold JCTA accountable uh, for that and not have them try to swindle us out of our money as well as to keep our this defined benefit. Uh, but what else did I do? I am also an advisory for the Advisory Council for the Racial Equity Policy. And I also sit on the Juvenile Justice Oversight Council through the governor's office. Thank you. Yeah, I should have mentioned I'm newly connected with the uh, Human and Civil Rights Committee of the JCTA group that's got some good momentum and energy. And uh, one of the things I'm in charge of is, uh, uh, well, one, working uh, as leadership in the restorative practice uh, trauma-informed care subgroup, but also uh, helping to organize events for the racial justice subcommittee of the human and civil rights uh, branch. And we still have a decision to make on uh, what, what two topics of interest do we want to hit uh, for or two remaining, one probably in February, one probably in April. What needs to be the focus of our discussion for JCTA members moving forward? We did one that that focused on NTI learning and connecting with the Justice Now hubs, uh, connecting with uh, extracurricular groups out there, hearing from parents and their concerns, and then we had a police free school discussion, which some of the members feel like we'd be looking at ending the pipeline to prison as our next one, but, and, and how does that connect with the police brutality we've seen in our city and how it's been responded to administratively. Uh, but I'd, I'd like to hear from 
I know two term limits sounds like a discussion that might need to be had, but uh, let me throw it out to the group. If you've got an idea or want to make a comment. A two term limit for what? I'm sorry, Greg. Uh, for all JCTA officers. I forgot you came on late. Yeah. Yvonne and I. That means I'm only going to be able to serve two terms. <laughs> well, right now you can only serve two terms. Not as an office. That's oh. why Tammy can't do another term as, as VP. Yes, she can. Oh, is it for all officers, Tyra? So Let what me see. If I'm not mistaken, it's for all officers, but I will confirm that because Tammy is running again. If I'm no, not mistaken. Kumar's running for that slot. She can't run again. Kumar's running against her. Oh. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, Kumar's running It will be running against her. Because there's no term limits. If you give one officer a term limit, then that means all officers are going to have a term limit. You're right. That's what we were kicking around. We feel like we need to put it together a... Uh, you, and I don't know if we want to do that. I'm sorry, Greg, because that would take me and Kuma off the board in two years if we did that. Well, we were just talking about a resolution and what we might want to see on it. So, but that was one of the things we were talking about. So, uh, can we save that uh, yeah, we can. stage in the uh, agenda? And it can be spe uh, position specific. So, Tyra, you could run for VP next term. And Kumar could run for president next term. Sure. His clock would start over as VP. <laughs> well, we got to go back and forth. Oh, that's, well, that's enough. Are you working, Tyra? I think we need to No. Okay, so let me tell you what happened, if y'all want to know. I went to the doctor about three weeks ago, and I sat down somewhere and brought home some big books. I did mm. not have a very bad infestation. I caught it very quickly, but I had to come out of pocket 1245. $1,245. So I am at the laundromat doing up the last of the 30 loads that I had to draw. <laughs> uh, having, oh, a, having a student with bed bugs is painful. They can't afford to do anything with it. That's right. It's horrible. Uh, you are, you do not know. And I don't like bugs and I'm afraid of bugs. And I mean, I, I'm terrified of them. And I didn't get any sleep the week before last because I was all messed up. I barely got sleep last week. And I'm finally now sleeping, but I'm still not in my bed. I'm on my couch. There was no activity in my living room. It was only contained to my bedroom on my bed. So he said I had a very small infestation and uh, that um, he, I caught it in time. So, but I'm, I'm still not in my bed. I don't know if I'm when I'm going to be going back to my bed. Sorry to hear that. But, uh, I'm at the laundry. Yes, because I'm like, I got into a state that I was depressed. I don't do bugs, and I'm so sorry. You know? I just don't. I can't. I can't. I can't. can't. So I'm sorry for interrupting, taking up y'all's time. <laughs> Not at all. No, 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 no. I didn't know that about the uh, term limits. And since I brought it up, I guess it is fair conversation. Any, yeah. I don't know if it's the focus of an HCR meeting, but it is something that needs to be discussed within JCTA in a, in a fair way. Um, I mean, we can, yeah, we can see. I just hate for like me and Kumar and then Matthew, I don't think he's running anymore who is a very strong voice on the board. I don't think Matthew's running though because he has his own club, social justice club or what have you going on. And, um, but we have some strong voices on the board and, and it's sitting in places that they can make some decisions. I would hate to put a time limit on it right now because like I said, me, Kumar, 
Beverly Chester Burton. Uh, I'm pretty sure Sharon Van Cleve will be back on the board. She's running again. So we have some very, and Tamara Patterson. We have some very strong voices on the board right now. And, and two that will be hopefully sitting as executive officers. And I would hate to um, I would hate for that to just have a term limit and then we get somebody in there that doesn't have the same interest as we have. And I know that's what they do to undercut some programs that I've, I are working. I mean, they might have their fleas, but that's kind of, you know, oh, this isn't going to work. So let's jump to this next thing. It's kind of something that happens all the time in the education system to where nothing can gain traction and, and move forward. But um, my understanding was, though, that all the other positions already have term limits. It's just president that doesn't. Is that wrong? Oh, well, I thought. No, because it, the president is an executive officer. The president is an executive officer. So if he has a, if he has, if he doesn't have a time limit, neither do we. It can't be only the president has a time limit. Can we find out for sure? Because uh, that's my understanding what... was that he was the only one who didn't have one. Let me. I'll find out. Yeah, the president used to have term limits uh, until two thousand and one. The previous Ooh, president okay. uh, was June Lee, and then Laura Kirchner. So there was rotation in the senior officers, which is only healthy. We have it for the president of the United States. We do not have it for senators or representatives. So that would perhaps take care of your concerns for the officers or the members of the board of trustees or the board of directors. But for the senior officers, there most surely should be term limits. Otherwise it leads to um, an inbred situation with um, uh, self-enrichment that seems to occur and corruption that seems to become deeply rooted. So Tyra, if you would find that out and we can have a discussion, I don't want to undercut rising stars such as you and Kumar, but uh, you know, we look at it and there's probably a strategy. So if you're secretary one year, could can you run for VP the following year or the following term? Yes, yeah, because I'm thinking like uh, Ted is going to be vice president at least for three times. And uh, she's running seems again. Like to me, too. You're right about that. She's and she's, there. Yeah, and she's running again. She's been there as long as I've been a board member. I've been a board member at least on the board 2014 or 2013. I've been a board member, and so now I'm going. Then I was a, I, I was, I was a board member to the secretary. I've been five or six, one of them, and she is running again. She's running again. So there is no time limit. On. That's because the term limits were eliminated in 2001, and uh, that applied to the vice president, the president, I and I'm not sure. I believe it's to the secretary and treasury also. But um, for the senior officers, it's my opinion, and since I've been there for 22 years now, um, it, that there should be some rotation in office for the senior officers. It makes no sense to me that you should have a president in power for 20 years. I don't disagree with that either. So we need to, so in putting together our resolution, we'd, we'd like to get your input Tyra on uh, how best to phrase that within, but we do need to look at term limits. Uh, Kenyatta, did you, or who just came on? Yeah. I'm really okay, Kenyatta, do you, hey, how you doing? Do you, hey, do you mind uh, giving us a little background? I, I know you teach and, <laughs> and you're in HCR, but do you mind, uh, Given us a little bit more, so some of us that don't know you as well as others, a little more background on yourself. 
Um, sure. I don't even know where to begin. in the mortgage industry as a mortgage loan underwriter. Um, our company didn't act quickly enough to be able to handle the financial downturn. And so they laid off 40% of their salaried employees and I was one to go. Um, I started substitute teaching as a result of just trying to work towards finishing a degree and trying to find something that was going to be a bit more... Um, stable for me and my family. Um, so um, I started substituting. First job was at Westport Stop. And ever since then, I fell in love with being in the classroom, especially with um, students who are considered like troubled youth, kids who've been through some things. And um, I just found that they need somebody to advocate for them because people, once they develop an attitude or an opinion of them, they don't normally get second and third chances. They normally get cut off from the top. And so um, uh, I've taught uh, elementary school. I started at Camp Taylor and I moved over to Rangeland. And from Rangeland, I went to um, Newburgh Middle once I got certified in special education. I've been a PR member with the union um, for a little over six years, I believe. Um, I was at Rangeland for several years, and now I've been at Newburgh for, this is my fourth year, and I've been PR for all four years there. So um, I just um, try to listen more than I speak. Um, I really do live by the whole uh, first seek to understand and then to be understood. I try to listen more than I speak. It's a task sometimes, especially when I feel like other people come with an agenda. And um, so that is sometimes easier said than done. But at the same time, um, I do believe that we are in an integral, integral part in our history, in our world, where it's important that we all use whatever voices that we have to speak up and to speak on the things that we see that are going on that either need to be improved or um, torn down and rebuilt. So um, see something, say something, do something. So that's where I'm at. Thank you. Was one of your elementary a leader? I, I, I No, it, thank you a lot because you, I didn't know how much our history is intersected. Uh, so I told, were you at a leader in me school, Kenyatta, when you say uh, you, you gave one of the seven? No. <laughs> I know, one of the seven habits of happy kids, um, oh. and that's Stephen Covey, seven habits of everything. Um, right. I was not at a leader in me school. I um, actually had a summer camp for several years that I got to write the curriculum and run for, and uh, we used the leader in me curriculum um, during the summer camp. So. I've not been able to convince an entire school to develop and use that um, part of the curriculum, even though I think the, the practices are, they set a strong foundation for success in the future um, if we use those seven uh, ideas. But I mean, you know, can't wait. I've, I'm it. a big fan. So I've spent, I did two two year stints at Leader and Me schools, uh, which was Michelle Penix at. Uh, Mill Creek, and then two years at Atkinson uh, under uh, Dr. Nutter. Uh, but I too, I, I mentioned to the group earlier that I have 14 years teaching, but I I started substitute teaching and transitioned from the financial industry and fell in love with working with the kids. Uh, did uh, Saw 50 elementary schools in my first 50 days teaching, and uh, I can I'm really good at walking into a building and, and feeling culture. Uh, and um, I feel Ooh, What culture. part of the financial industry was you in? Uh, I, I was a uh, financial service advisor. So I, I was licensed to 
trade uh, mutual funds, annuities, and uh, life insurance. So life insurance. Greg, we have that past history. I'm uh, No, agree on the first investors. Maybe, maybe even Casa Nostra, kind of, kind of small and tight. I don't, I don't, I never made it that far. Never turned the corner to where I felt like I was helping people more than I was uh, chasing a sales dollar. So it was time for me to get in 2007. Uh, but anyways, back to the agenda, uh, student assignment. Uh, unless I'll, I'll leave it out there to the group, throw a hand up or throw it in chat if you've got a a really good idea for one of the two remaining uh, human and civil rights uh, uh, racial justice uh, subcommittee events. Uh, one that will probably happen in February and the other in April. Uh, just drop it in chat or raise your hand, mention it in the conversation as we move along here. So student assignment, uh, Gay, do you want to take the lead on this one? or who should take the lead on this one? Um, well, real quick, two things. Kim, uh, Kimberly was on the call and she, oh. got and she was gonna try again, so she may join us and if so, we'll pause and get her to do her little introduction. Um, and then student assignment is going to be a regular feature on our weekly agenda between now and January 18th. Uh, not so that we have rehash the same things we've already discussed over and over and over, but because uh, we are soliciting public comment. And so those of us who had a chance to chime in last week about student assignment, unless there's some new uh, feedback, uh, we've captured that. And so what you said last week is part of the uh, um, public forum that we're going to be putting together. and. If we want to comment on student assignment again because we've got something to add uh, each week, then that's more than welcome. Or if there's somebody on the call that wasn't here last week that has something they want to make part of the public dialogue, uh, then we want to make that space. Um, and last week I turned our meeting into the uh, radio show for uh, Forward Radio 106.5 FM. And so the commentary that we've heard and the fact that this is an open meeting and that we're, oh, right, we were going to share this on Facebook or something. Um, so that's something we may want to discuss if we want to do that now or when we want to do that. Um, but the, the invitation is out there. Um, I'm, when Latasha and I met with Dr. Polio uh, a week and a half ago, we suggested that they solicit three minute videos. Um, so that the public has other opportunities, not just through us, but maybe through the district or we could work together, like let's work together and solicit three minute videos and, and get as much uh, dialogue going um, because we don't have the opportunity to speak at board meetings and board members don't have an opportunity to really hear uh, from the community. And so uh, this is just one of those spaces that, that we've made available, that we're making available so that the public can uh, oops, got the auto again, please. So the public can participate. So um, I wanted to share feedback uh, that I got from Renee Murphy. So that's here on the agenda. Let me just read. Like I mentioned on last week's call, uh, we suggested to Dr. Polio that they solicit three minute videos. And he liked the idea like he Perked up, he said, that's why, you know, that's why Renee is on these calls. Let's all work together and figure something out. But the thing is, is we're running out of time. And so I texted Renee. <coughs> and I was just going to read her response. I, uh, I, is it too late to start taping? I think we can... we're already recording. Um, oh. But we're not, oh. we're not like out on Facebook or anything. We got you. So, Sorry. That's okay. So I, on Tuesday, I um, messaged Renee and I said, good morning. Do you have any thoughts on ways to solicit three minute videos? <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> I took my COVID test yesterday. I don't know the results yet. <coughs> and I've gone nowhere but to the grocery store. People got to eat. So 
I know exactly when I got it, if I got it. Um, good morning. Do you have any thoughts on ways to solicit three minute videos for the community to provide public comment on the proposed changes to the student assignment as discussed on last week's call? Weekly people's agenda meetings are open to the public and we have committed to making space in our meetings to record, edit and post feedback from those who can join our calls and wish to share. They're every Monday at four. Can you encourage or direct folks there in addition to any other avenues you're working on? Thank you. And she replied, hey there, I know we are still in discussions with the board about this. We, are, we were just talking about this on Friday. Can I follow back up with you after the first of the year to confirm how we are going to handle this? Also, I would like to set up a follow-up meeting uh, with you and Latasha about organizing the coalition of additional grassroots organizations that we discussed that Dr. Polio would speak with, that would that work? And <coughs> what she's referring to there was like a quarterly grassroots uh, get together, which uh, also needs to take place. Uh, I think more often than quarterly right now, especially, but you know, we'll, we'll get, let's get something on the calendar and we'll go from there. But she's um, said that they can't really do anything with us until the first of the year. So I guess that's not that far away, but there will only be three weeks left before their board meeting. And so I think we just need to keep doing what we're doing and making that space and being as visible as we can through the channels that we've created, um, which the radio show being one of them, Facebook being one, uh, Greg and um, was there anybody else on our call with the Alliance that's on this call today? I don't think so. Um, where we talked about whether or not we could share this on the Alliance's page versus on your JCPS's page. If we wanted to take this group right here and go out into the, into the Facebook world and say, hey, we're having this meeting and we just wanted to go live so that people know what's going on. And you know, if you want a chance to, to have your voice heard, send an email. And in fact, um, I probably need to check and see if I've gotten any emails, but um, that was, that's how we're encouraging people to participate in these calls uh, is through sending us an email and then we email them the link, which is very similar to how KEU has been doing their calls. So any other thoughts on uh, how to get people to come to these calls and how to, how to be seen and be visible? And uh, in absence of uh, the districts, until the district is also able to support I can also um, post, like make a flyer or something for the meetings on our social media. We don't have a lot of followers right now, but I'm working on that. But at least it would be out there and that would be another platform that we could use. I love that, Liz. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I would think there's a lot of things to pick up in a meeting like this as a uh, high school newspaper reporter or even university newspaper reporter. I, I, and I love the idea of having a stronger student voice, so thank you. Um, for those that are on the call regularly, just keep that in the back of your head. We're gonna, we're recording and, and maybe going live soon. So uh, no, no stories about, <laughs> I heard, I heard uh, Councilwoman X said this about Councilwoman Y, we're probably gonna have to, <laughs> That's going to make more work, uh, but uh, just be aware that, that it's going to be out there. So uh, was that all we wanted to say on student assignment? Uh, just the question about whether or not we want to try and share this on Facebook. I'm not even 100% sure that my technology works properly. So maybe at the end of this call, anybody who wants to stick around uh, could experiment with us and we keep our promise to be out there visible and just make it a commercial if nothing else. If nobody else comes on, at least there's a live video out there somewhere that people can watch that says, hey, this is what we're doing and this is what we're encouraging people to do. That's up for that. We can go ahead and finish our agenda and do that at the end. We take a vote. Uh, so reactions, give a cheer or a thumbs up if you like the idea or uh, it's my, I see one thumbs up, two. And a hand from Liv. Undecided. 
Tyra's got the thumb up. Randy, with that, I think we do have consensus then. Yeah. Good. We can do that at the end. Go ahead and finish our business. That's all I have on student assignment, I think. Okay. So I'm going to hand it back over to you shortly, Gay, but lots of things coming up. Uh, General Assembly 2021. <laughs> you know, it's rolling. I'm, they're starting the pretty much the same day we are back to school. There's so many teachers that are going uh, for, for health reasons, uh, radio and computer silent over the holidays as much as they can. So uh, I understand there is an agreement that they won't try to rush this pension discussion through the first week, but uh, maybe you can speak more to that, Gay. And uh, we've got things that <laughs> need to be addressed very quickly, uh, including the pension uh, issue and, and how do we, it looks like JCTA is conceded to some extent from the uh, PR meeting that I made and uh, what kind of actions can we take to drive the conversation in, a, in the way it needs to go, including a resolution. So uh, stack yourself there, Yvonne. I just stacked myself. I think it's worth cautioning that are we willing to take the words of self-avowed sewer rats? That's what they're saying. And Brent's saying, oh, you know, they're not going to do this because they said so. The people who said that the pension issue was dead right before it got revived in a sewer bill. I'm just saying. Did we mention it? We're taking <laughs> <laughs> way, way to keep it uh, directed. Dear JCPS, oh no, you're doing stack, come on. I'm just saying. Somebody's on stack. Though. The lovely and talented gay is on stack. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add to Yvonne's uh, brilliant wisdom and point out that you don't even have to be a sewer rat to be someone who can go back on their word. Uh, my own senator seemed to understand how harmful charter schools were and even said gasping things like "How do they sleep at night?" to me and various other things. And then when the bill was time to be voted on, she voted in favor of it and she said, uh, oh, but it changed. I thought you liked the change. Like she gave herself permission to go against the people that had come to express their concern because, you know, there was a, a slight change to the language in the bill. This is not a good change in, in, on our standards by any means. Yeah, this was a, another case of, they were gonna cut off everybody's heads off and now it's only 10%. And I thought that was enough. You didn't, that's not something you think is good. And there's a book that they're playing from that Alec wrote when they use all these tactics. So we can't forget that either. What, oh, the Alec book, is that what you said? Dark money, Alec, you know, they, they know what they're doing. They've done this 40 times before us. They've had a lot of practice. So the discussion we need to have um, is how do we drive the narrative in a different direction and, and by what means? Uh, anybody else want to step into the, the pension dilemma? I, thank you for sharing that. Uh, Yvonne, do you think you could find that link to that article you shared on Facebook around uh, the backdoor a drive-by pension uh, I, oh, the thing that I happened in did. Rhode Island? Oh. Was that what it was? Oh, God, I, yeah. Oh, it spoke to Kentucky directly, the article I, I'm thinking of. Let me see what I can do. I'm almost positive that was David Sirota. You guys, okay. 
Go well, on, I guess and we're, I'll... we're going to move down the agenda. Yes. Uh, or Ed Sedell. It could be Ed Ted Sedell also. Sedell or Sirota. They both were involved in uh, Rhode Island. All right, so uh, we've got a we've got January twelfth coming up. Two events: uh, a day of action nationally from the Demand Safe Schools Coalition, and uh, we may need to talk about what an action looks locally to connect with what's happening uh, nationally along those lines. Uh, but also, day of learning is somebody. Uh, would somebody be willing to give us more insight on the day of learning, January 12th? Well, what we do on the day of learning? Yes, ma'am. You go down. I'm sorry, I'm eating. You go down to the state capitol. Um, JCTA tells you to meet with your, or JCTA or KA tells you to meet with your uh, representatives, like your senators, your state reps. Um, and speak on issues that concern you, or they may even give you uh, something to talk to them about. Okay. And well, we, we used to get to sit in the general assembly during the, um, the session. But is that going to happen with, in the COVID world? I don't believe so. Okay. Not this year. There, there will be some sort of day of learning, but not what we're used to. Okay. And that is set aside. That's, uh, you can have, is that where the three building reps for, for each building come in or who gets to go to that? They've had people ask if they want to go. They're going to right. have at least two. January 12th is one. And then there's one, one a if it's not the next Tuesday, it's the Tuesday after that. They may add more, but they are not committed to that. I asked. Is anybody promoting a Zoom option if we're not able to do it live? I mean, I, I think that's, you know, if we set aside it, that time and space that we want to be in front of the legislators, uh, I think that's something we should be pushing for if it's not already there. just because there's too much on the slate to let whether or not we can meet live and and talk face to face uh, I have to look at my notes Greg because I'm thinking there is going to be a zoom option or some type of option where we are able to see the live session okay and if I need to request a day off as an alternative Building room. It'll be an association league. Say that again. I'm sorry. It'll be an, a JCTA association league. You don't have to request off. JCTA will send that association league request into your school, letting them yeah. know what day you'll be out. Okay. And, and who do I need to make aware to send that association leave notice? Usually, if you are selected, Kathy Donahue sends that information to either the secretary and the bookkeeper because they have to know how to code it. The reason I ask, I'm just in a kind of a semi limbo state with the, uh, I think we finally have enough teachers in Waller to qualify for two building reps, so, but I've only got an uh, invite for the meeting Tanya couldn't make. Uh, so I'll, I'll follow well, um, up. Yeah, um, you will, if you want to, you should receive an email about the day of learning. You will submit that information. I think it's submitted to Deanne Flaherty, I believe it is. Um, you will submit that to her and she'll let you know whether or not you were selected, I believe. I'm trying to remember from last year. Yeah, I guess Kenyatta is asking the question I'm trying to. How do we signal we want to be selected? I 
turned in my name to Deanne Flaherty. You know? And just said, I'm interested in being a- I'm sorry, I got, um, I'm sorry, I got kicked out and I just got back in. Uh, you will receive an email about the day of learning and it'll tell you exactly what to do. And then you will send that, uh, you will reply to, uh, I, I believe it, to Deanne Flaherty, letting them know that you want to go to the day, or uh, attend the day of learning. And I'm sorry, I don't know if I came back in on the butt end of something, but my phone started reconnecting. All right. Uh, anything else we want to discuss on? Well, if you're not familiar with Demand Safe Schools, um, let me see if I can find that link real quick. But, but uh, at least. Uh, Yvonne and I have been talking uh, with a group called National Educators United, which is uh, our statewide group is uh, Kentucky Educators United. And we've been trying to walk as much as we can hand in hand with uh, Demand Safe Schools, which um, is a coalition of rock star uh, social and justice activist groups. Uh, there is the list of the uh, coming action, but uh, there's conversation about connecting labor groups around you know, sa safety and equity and return to schools, um, PPE and, and COVID concerns, but how do we use this platform to, to change the to, uh, from away from we need police in every building to we need nurses in every building. We need restorative justice coordinators in every building, uh, mental health clinics that are meeting the needs of the trauma that's walking through the door, um, fully funding Title I and ID, ID, IDF schools. Um, and but we feel like uh, the teachers and labor unions can be a platform to really <laughs> call for some systemic governmental change. Which, you know, if you're following rent mor moratoriums, don't do anything, but potentially kick back the date, we're going to throw you on the street. So, where's the real solutions moving forward? How do we move from a state that uses economic oppression for? A form of violence, um, and and so that I guess I'll leave it out there. Discussion on the demands. The kind of I'm sorry, I don't know if it was me, but mine was my my. I, it was breaking up when you were speaking, <laughs> Greg. Okay, okay. So you want me to Can read? Are you familiar yeah. with the demand safe schools demands? Uh, Tara? Am I familiar? Yes. Okay. With the demands for demand safe schools? So are you familiar with the, where the demands are with that group right now? No, well, I yeah. don't. So if I can get that sent to me, yes, I want that sent to me. Okay, I but dropped I'm it in sure chat. I'm going to be on board. Are you able to pull it up off of chat? I would not watch yep. We can add it to the agenda too, uh, or even okay. But it's the same list, Tyler. It's that same list that we've been uh, working off of when we made our uh, the. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the alliance okay. voted yeah. on it, yeah. and it, so how do we and how do we talk about what needs to be addressed locally in JCTA, and how do we connect what needs to 
be a platform for anybody concerned with the, the greater health of our community um, and turn that into a resolution was part of the conversation that uh, Yvonne and I had earlier. Um, and one, I wanted to get feedback from this group. Um, so some of the things we felt needed to be discussed in a resolution to be put forth to JCTA. And I think we've got a couple weeks uh, before they even meet again and have to vote on anything. But uh, uh, <clears throat> we had talked about term limits. We had talked about uh, setting a uh, diversity index for JCTA leadership to say, you know, our Leadership should be no less than one third of our overall group. Um, and how do we define that diversity it needs to be part of the conversation. How, can we take an anti-charter stance? Can we take a uh, invested pension and, and attract future educators uh, resolution? Can we incorporate a police free schools? And what of the demand safe schools do we want to um, stand on in a resolution? Uh, the one that jumps out to me is this <laughs> eviction uh, prevention. I mean, it's just insane to me to, to think what our families, my, some of my students are going through right now, thinking about, okay, they keep moving it back. Okay, we don't have to worry about it until January 31st now. What am I going to do when I don't have six months, eight months of rent to pay my landlord? Uh, that's a hot economic oppression uh, tinder stick, as far as I'm concerned. So I'd like to have the discussion with the larger group uh, on what have we left out? What do we need to be concerned about in each of those categories uh, when putting together a uh, resolution? And I'd rather hold the pension discussion to for now, Randy. I know you got stuff to talk about or, or the can we talk about one of those that we didn't discuss earlier? I should put that in chat, I'm sorry. Term limits. I added them to the agenda while you were talking to me. So. Did you get them all? Are you that quick? Oh, you are that quick. Uh, JCTA diversity specifically. How do, how do we elect a board and representatives that are reflective of the? Uh... And uh, BSK too, like uh, Brent has- Oh my goodness. Yeah, please add that as a separate item because to have a president that can't ever go away appoint 10 members of a 12 person <laughs> 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 I mean, that, and that's our uh, lobbying arm. That that's pretty hey. shit. <laughs> that's and both positions have term limits. We don't. There was. There's been so much mystery behind who, what those seats represent. Like, are they regional? How long have they been serving in that position? Is there a term limit? Um, I've been hearing a lot of people asking questions, but I haven't been hearing people get answers to those questions. Let me plant the seed if we're not ready to discuss it necessarily. Be be thinking about what a resolution might look like and how do we drive the conversation, one, to where it needs to be had, and two, you know, keep track of who's saying what about each of these because I think that's, that's going to drive some voting moving forward and if we're going to um, address the, the powers that be, we we need to be smart about it. This might even be a good subcommittee type 
project so that some of us go off and work and by next Monday we come back with some more than powers that be systems that be too. Um, Avon. One of my thoughts is if nothing else, it makes connections for people that you know the the people who thought that uh um oh Jason Nemus was a great endorsement over a real public education candidate have been he gets being reendorsed because the people get being picked by the same person. You know, the guy who picked the group this year picked the group who was there two years ago and was there two years before that when people were complaining about it. And what does it mean? You know, you're not going to be able to get rid of Jason Nemeth until you can get rid of the people who support and enable him. So I'll shut up now. And I would suggest more than get rid of, uh, ha have meaningful conversations enough with people that are I, I think we are so lacking in the, the conversation, the education, and the uh, self-reflection um, piece of it that I think that's where we move the ball long term. But that's an easier or a task easier said than done. Uh, Randy, do you want to, was there anything we didn't cover earlier on two, our term limits or pensions you want to weigh in on? Oh, one thing I wanted to mention on the, uh, on the investment side of things, one thing that was mentioned nationally as a strategy is um, that could get us examining the uh, pension fund investments a little more is in the area of uh, environmental justice. So there's been some groups that have successfully demanded that their uh, teacher investments like student led uh, movements to demand divestment from any non renewable energy uh, investments. And so that could be in and in the door to, to for us to start looking at what kind of investments are being made at the uh, at the uh, pension level and, and can we use that as a platform to delve deeper is my wonder of you, I guess. Yes, possibly. Uh, the problem is that as far as teacher pension and the employees, state employees of pension is they've signed um, gag orders and uh, non-disclosure agreements. So under penalty of uh, lawsuits, uh, these pensions are uh, sworn to silence. So getting at the fee structures and the contracts, um, from my experience, filing a lawsuit to do that um, is impossible, given that the TRS is unwilling to um, take that step. However, I just see on Twitter, it's just popped up that Philip Shepard has ruled that Daniel Cameron has um, standing in the pension transparency case involving KRS and can require those companies such as Carlisle Blackstone and um, um, the others that are involved there to uh, re reveal those contracts. That is something that Daniel Cameron has uh, signed on to. And originally the state Supreme Court said that the uh, plaintiffs did not have standing, but since Judge Shepard, um, the Supreme Court has said that uh, the um, Attorney General does have standing, it could be that the um, lid is peeled away, at least in the KRS Mayberry lawsuit, 
on those secret contracts that just popped up on Twitter from John Cheeves of the Lexington Herald Leader about 20 minutes ago. So um, it may be that TRS is included under that umbrella of having to reveal to its shareholders, meaning the teachers, the exact nature of investments, which would include socially conscious uh, investments and uh, ones that have two heretofore had secret agreements, which could turn out to be illegal because that's the um, crux or that's the thrust of the Mayberry lawsuit that uh, is still pending and was one of the, and was the main thrust of the a lawsuit that I filed um, against KEA and um, TRS and JCTA for not uh, fighting to reveal uh, these, um, uh, the ex exorbitant fees that are paid by our pensions. So yeah, the social, socially conscious investments, um, um, are definitely important. I think CalPERS, California um, pension plan has recently uh, decided to divest itself from um, fossil fuels. So that is and that the came van from students and unions. <coughs> yes, that is possible since it's our pension. If you're a teacher, well, that's absolutely that's something we've got to push on. Uh, yeah, that's I I did not know it it had that veil of secrecy uh, in place. Oh, yeah. Um, that was the first lawsuit I filed back in 2014. Um, I'm reading Twitter. It says, for bluegrass politics, Franklin Circuit Judge Philip Shepard has ruled that Attorney General Daniel Cameron can intervene in a pension lawsuit case. The Kentucky Supreme Court had said government employees have no standing to sue over state investment decisions that might hurt their pension funds. Okay. Then Daniel Cameron signed on to that lawsuit and it went before uh, the Kentucky courts, which is Philip Shepard's court. And he has ruled that Cameron can intervene, which may open up a whole can of worms. We may get transparency yet because that's an awful lot of money. We're talking billions of dollars. That's why this legislature is hell bent on, reforming as many pensions as it can because the inviolable contract prevents them from uh, um, skipping out on this debt, which is what they would love to do. They'd love to push it back on the districts. That's why nobody quite realizes the seriousness of this pension fight. There is two to three times the yearly budget of Kentucky at stake in these lawsuits. And that's why the legislature keeps trying to pull a fast one on us and on KRS. And what they call reform is basically an attempt to break the contract. But if you don't have a strong union, if you have an entrenched leadership that does not take risks, that is not willing to fight for this, then of course you get this rather milk toast approach and saying, well, I guess we'll just have to go with the hits that we're going to take and we're going to have to sat be satisfied with reduced benefits. That wouldn't occur if you had some rotation in the executive officers rather than entrenched, self-enriching leadership in the form of a type of family that's been there for so many years. It's undemocratic. And I'm frankly surprised that more people have not raised the roof on this form of undemocratic leadership, especially a group of educators. We're supposed to be aware of uh, basic civics, and that would seem to call for term limits. If Barack Obama, who was, in my opinion, very fine leader, is limited to two terms, I would have loved to have seen a third term. If he's limited to two, then that should also apply once again to all the teacher unions. I think Randy Weingarten of AFT needs to go. We have term limits in uh, NEA, why not JCTA? We have term limits in KEA, why not JCTA? Yeah, and it's such a dilemma that we're 
and the solution seems to be what is being proposed uh, in the in the way of an alternative pension right now. Uh, sorry, uh, back to you for stack calling, Yvonne. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was busy listening to Randy. I'm so sorry. But, you know, in fairness to me, please, Gay, go ahead. I am so sorry. Um, I was, Randy can talk. <laughs> Congratulations. Tyra has also put her name in stack. So using progressive stack, we should let Tyra go first. Oh, shoot. I saw. I will never put Cameron and Transparency in the same sentences and miss the stack ahead of it. Please go, Tyra. I'm so sorry. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Huge. Yeah, I was like, uh, Transparency and Cameron does not go in the same sentence for me. I'm so sorry, even if it is for teacher's pension, because if you cannot provide transparency for the murder of Breonna Taylor, and you covered it up and you let those officers walk freely. I cannot, I cannot put him in the same sentence with transparency. I'm sorry, Randy. I do not like him. Tara, it's selective, just like selective listening, it's selective transparency. He's going to want transparency if the people he's going after happen to be Democrats. Exactly. All right. He thinks yeah, there was hanky I'm, panky in the Bashir administration. That is Daddy Bashir, which there probably was. So all of a sudden now transparency is good. Yeah, there's also a question of the contributions that were made to um, Joe Biden's campaign by some of the big firms such as Carlisle Blackstone and what uh, Mitch McConnell, who is basically the puppet master of Daniel Cameron, was trying to do was to undercut those companies or to threaten them so that they would not continue to contribute to Joe Biden's campaign. And so using Daniel Cameron, he had him sign on to that transparency lawsuit since those big guys up in New York were funneling some money to uh, Joe Biden and his campaign. So McConnell thought he'd put pressure on them to uh, reveal their fee structure, which would cause then teachers and government workers to be very angry and to harm them financially. So um, I understand where you're coming from with Daniel Cameron. In this fight, however, we don't have any allies. If Cameron, for whatever nefarious reasons, wants to be our ally and force transparency and make um, Schwartzman and the other leaders of the New York law firms sweat, what choice do we have? We, the legislature is not going to help us. What choice do we have if we're going to fight for this uh, saving the uh, pensions? The, you know, look at the legislature. The first thing they want to do is reform it, basically undercut any new contributions to the pension. That's why they want to put the new hires as of 2022 into this hybrid plan where they allow contributions to go to managed funds. Well, when you have management you have fees. And so that's going to be paying off a lot of these contributors to these PACs. One of which is uh, these PACs, of course, is Better Schools Kentucky. There's an awful lot of money flowing back and forth under the aegis of Better Schools Kentucky. And we have no idea how that money is being spent. That's part of the dark money wave in politics. So yes, we have injustice and Daniel Cameron, listen, I don't like him either, but when he said he was going to sign on and force transparency, it's hard to argue with that given the sums of money that are simply being leached from these pensions. I mean, I can understand personal feelings against Cameron, but strategically he's an ally, whether we like him or not, when the devil's on our side, I mean, if, what do you say to that? I would agree with that stance too, Randy. I, I do. It, it's clearly political gamesmanship. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if I would go so far as to call him an ally, but if we don't get to the real truth, <laughs> we're not moving forward. And um, 
and I think a lot of not just Republican corporate interest, but Democratic corporate interest is tied to uh, pension funding, and and we've got to get a hold of it and, and claim some ownership as teachers. One point, if I could speak, this last thing I say is if we win those two elections in Georgia, then that may undercut, undercut McConnell's power. That's one ray of hope at this point. And that would, of course, undercut um, um, Cameron's uh, power because McConnell would not be the puppet master any longer. I, I do agree he's calling for the right thing, um, even though I don't agree with him very often. Sorry to cut you off, Kate. Oh, no problem. Um, I was just going to say, the one thing I was going to say, um, and it segues perfectly off of what Randy said, because uh, the lawmakers need to also do their part. And Jason Nemus, in exchange for the endorsement from BSK, should be willing to uh, write some legislation, perhaps, that uh, removes these barriers and provides this transparency that uh, is so critical that we that we currently don't have access to. And again, it's the conversation. It can't hurt to ask because publicly, if he resists, why would he resist supporting uh, the transparency that is necessary for these pensions? And to Greg's um, question earlier, uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to read Chris Toby's book, Kentucky Fried Pensions, but it does, uh, he does detail a lot about the secret no bid contracts and the lack of uh, visibility and transparency that exists around these pensions and where that money does flow. So some of the things that Randy was speaking about uh, and, the, and the, the secret money that's taken off the top before it's invested for the teachers and why the performances have been so incredibly low relative to the market and uh, what has happened uh, during that same time period, uh, the theories behind where that money has gone uh, are in, are detailed quite a bit in uh, Chris's book. That's all I have. Okay, other critical legislation coming down the pipe. Do do we know the update on? Uh, uh, where uh, Attica's bill that's still sitting on the uh, House Majority's uh, desk or committee's desk, do we, do we know where we can support or how we best support uh, Attica and uh, uh, others at state level for, for laws we want to see? I don't know anything new. Tyra, you know anything new on that one? She dropped off. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Gay. Oh, she's there. She must have dropped off. I mean, I, I think, <laughs> you know, if history teaches us nothing uh, with uh, Republicans in supermajority, I, I think we can expect to see some real questionable stuff coming down the pipe all at the same time. And uh, and certainly, I, uh, Yvonne and I discussed it earlier. We feel like the pension is the the place to challenge at this point. But does anybody have a different perspective on that? I was back. <laughs> Tyra, we had a big question why you got knocked off. I'm sorry. Yes, well, I got something to tell you all. So okay. none of the executive officers have a term limit. None of, none of us do. The president, the vice president. Again, because we had heard she wasn't. You know if that's true? Sure. So what again? Is Tammy running again? Because we had heard she wasn't. I thought she was. I thought she said she was. We don't have to guess. We can know. Um. Uh, mm. 
prior to 2001. How, 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 how are we going to know? How are we going to know? Okay. I'm just going to ask Tammy. I'm going to text her right now and ask, hey, are you running oh, for right. election? Right. That's all we have to do with that. <laughs> not so hard. No, it's not. <laughs> Oh. Well, that's good to know, Tyra. And you have served one term and you're running for a second term? Yes, ma'am. All right. So the question we had of the group, and then back to Randy, because I know he was trying to say something there, but uh, how do we support Attica and others at the state level that are pushing for legislation uh, that affects us directly? Uh, how do we best support them moving forward? Uh, well, they have a website, and I forgot. I got to look at Attica. Like for the Breonna Taylor law and anything else that they're put that they're pushing through, you go out and you sign that sign up to be a co-sponsor. That's what I did for Attica. Um, so anything that she has, you go out there, you be a co-sponsor. Get your organizations like the Kentucky Alliance and anyone else to uh, sign on and help as well. Can you drop that link in chat for us? Oh Lord, you want me? Ah! Oh Lord have mercy, Jesus. I just put the wrong thing on my food. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's not your fault. <laughs> does, that, does that mean syrup on hamburger? What does that mean? No, it meant like agave sweetener on my dang on uh, Chinese food. <laughs> it might be. We're going to see. Oh. <laughs> We're going to try it out. We're going to hungry. Um, let me look up Attica, Scott. Uh, yeah, I had to come in and we have to take when I'm dealing with clothes. I have to find out. I, I, oh, wait a minute. Do I want to do that one? And, and how do we push I'll it off it. getting the how do we get it out and put pressure on the desk who's com committee chair is sitting on? The well, let me, uh, how I'm going to tell you. Ooh, and I'm so glad you reminded me. Uh, I'm so glad you reminded me, but now I got to find it. Because my senator who is Michael Nemes sent me something and I have to find it. <laughs> like what, what we want, what I wanted him to support. I said, oh, so he's sending me one information from me. Okay, I, I, I got one from uh, Jay too. I'm, I'm skeptical. Oh, did you? I'm, I might choose my questions I answer. <laughs> I don't want <laughs> oh. I, I told him I wanted him to support. Uh, Brianna Taylor's law and something else. I can't remember. But it's on my desk and I need to get it and mail it out to them. But you got to find out who the people are on that committee or who's the chair of that committee or even who's on the committee and reach out to them. We're watching you. We want to know and this is what we want. I think it's also time to start using their own language against them right they talk about oh we can't defund the police well you know what you can't defund public education mm -mm. use their own mm -mm. words right. against them <clears throat> and it's not really defunding the police department exactly it's, it's not but fun. you know how they are you know how they are the other I thing know. i think we should say is that we they should not limit COVID responses because that would not be pro-life. You always <laughs> use their words like when you one. can. I like that one. I like that one, Yvonne. Always use their words when you can. Love it. Well, there's so much double standard in there. We need to start calling it. And I, I think we need to be looking at a strategy to get the, uh, conversation on uh, Brianna's state law into the editorials and, and mainstream media to, to demand a conversation at the, at the state legislative level. 
because that's at the heart of a lot of stuff. Um, are we ready to move on to uh, Randy? Did was there a question? I have. Uh, I thought you had jump, tried to jump in earlier. Uh, no, you may have tried in chat. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, anything else on coming down the legislative pipe that we need to be aware of as a group? Anyone close enough to the inner whisperings of stuff happening? Get, because I guarantee it's not just going to be pension. It's going to be all over the place. Bad, bad uh, fiscal conservative. I mean, we, we scarcity is going to be the name of the game with uh, and, and holding any new taxes if we know anything from the history's playbook. So well, they're not against higher taxes. It's just not higher taxes for rich people. Oh, Nemus sure. is already floating the trial balloon to end income taxes and go to and raise the sales, the state sales tax. Yeah, we've seen that in other states for sure. That, that, uh. Uh, you know, uh, what's his face? Uh, Jimmy Higdon's been talking about that for 10 years. Are we going to see like another? Tennessee. Are we going to see another round of uh, legalizing marijuana and and the what that? I think so. Because that's that's the proactive conversation we need to be having. And, and well, you know, and you can use it as a weapon because you can say things are terrible. We can't do this. Nah, they can't be that bad. Are you legalized weed? If there were that bad, it would be legalized weed. So it can't be that bad. Sorry. And I guess that'd be pretty tough to put into a teacher's resolution to JCTA on that one. <laughs> hmm. Well, you know, I argue that one. I, I, I mean, uh, not about it would be not because of KEA. KEA before that about legalizing marijuana because they get to talking about addictive drugs and uh, what it was, um, heroin. I was like, I have never, I argued it and I said what I said and said my piece because that was about my, my, it was like the same, you know. I'm trying to thank y'all because you know my sister died of an overdose and I got up there and I told my story about my uncle, my mother who's on opioids for pain um, and my sister who died of an overdose. And I said, I've never, I've never heard of anybody dying from an overdose from smoking marijuana or something like that. Cause that's all they kept talking about. And then I, that was at the KEA delegate assembly. Good so, for you, Tyra. You Thank you. So Speaking was, of resolutions, should we have a resolution for JCTA to support Cameron on his quest for transparency. We've been trying to show that we were that we support both Democrats and Republicans. This is an ideal opportunity. I like that idea. Yeah. yeah. We don't. We don't even have to mention his name, though. <laughs> we can just. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I don't think we uh, support the Attorney General. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Toby might be helpful in this instance. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to get a hold of him, but uh, and I think we need him as part of this discussion before we put the final resolution. Right. The resolution to support uh, the transparency and and uh, ability to uh, to di direct investment uh, from the teacher owners. That that. That's a crazy system that you're describing. Exactly right. You're exactly right, Greg. That's, it's our money. And in 2016, JCTA published an action newsletter opposing transparency. It's unbelievable. Hmm. How about we say support those with standing? I mean, it, yeah. it's, 
uh, corporations don't even do that shit. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's crazy. Uh, your your owners have to have be part of the decision making process. And how did we get to where we are? Did we decide to have some committee work between now and next Monday to work on a resolution? And maybe that involves reaching out to Chris Toby and having this conversation. Randy, Greg, Yvonne, me, Tyra, are you interested? Yeah. We can have a little side, sidebar conversation and come back next week with uh, some additional ideas. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You'd be amazed how much Chris Toby knows. He could be extremely helpful. I invited him to our call, so he's been busy. And, and he knows more than he's able to share with us, but just to pick his brain for strategies too. Uh, uh, um, yeah, I'm interested. It's a. <laughs> he literally wrote the book right. on this. Yeah, my. Uh, it's on my. I, I'm. A poor, but it's on my short list of the next eight books that I need to order and dig through. I know Chris personally, and I've had the discussion, some discussion with him over the years, but I, I've not dug through his book. Let me just say one thing. What lies behind this are the ratings of the state's bonds by the big ratings agencies up East, Fitch, and S&P, and Moody's, and they are hanging over like vultures, this state legislature, and if the legislature perhaps even makes a gesture towards resolving this financial crisis, because that's what it is, it's three times the state's budget, yearly budget, if they make a gesture, they can avoid a credit downgrade if they get another credit downgrade we're just one small step above junk bonds. If we ever want to float a bond issue to build a road or to build a school or to fund um, any of the programs that we would like to see more funding for, perhaps restorative justice, whatever, the bonds would have to pay an extremely high interest rate to attract people. And that that is where the rubber meets the road, and that is why the legislature is scrambling to come up with something that appears to be a resolution to the state's major financial crisis. If they can push this debt back onto the localities such as Louisville, Lexington, they can all declare bankruptcy. The state cannot. No state can declare bankruptcy, and so they're caught between a rock and a hard place right now. And that's why they're trying whatever, you know, sleight of hand they can. If they can slip it past the teachers, they will. And then undercut the uh, pension debt, say, okay, we're going to pay this off. And all the new debt that we would rack up with a defined, pension plan, defined benefit plan will not accrue because we put all the new hires into these crappy hybrid plans. It's basically a cut in salary. And when somebody realizes that, they'll look to another profession because basically you're eliminating their pension. Sorry that was so long, but that's what's going on behind the scenes here. Yeah, they're trying to get bad debt off the books and it's become a do it our way or else for uh, edge against <laughs> what but not just the bad debt, but the liability, the ongoing liability. They don't want to continue to give teachers benefits like this. Well, yeah, well, right. That's, I mean, that's how you get the debt off the books. You get rid of the future debt uh, to start with. And it's... Um, but there's also... It's the hard reality of doing business in the United States and we can't continue to sit back and, and watch this erode in the corporation and bank's favor uh, because they don't have the public's interest in mind. Uh, go ahead, Randy, I'm sorry. What, what is the, the kicker in this law that they're gonna to try to push through is that if, if the fund is not up to 90% funding, then the board of directors of, or the 
the, the board of teachers retirement system can implement measures to collect enough money, meaning they're going to cut benefits until they can raise the fund back up to 90%. And teachers don't quite understand that that means their benefits will be reduced, perhaps by as much as 50 or 60%. And that's what people need to live on in retirement. So it affects all the public school teachers across the state. And that's the kicker in the law that they're trying to shove through under the uh, euphemism of reform. I'm sorry, you all. I have to go. Um, thank you, Randy. Uh, I will be meeting next week, right? Okay. I'll see you all later after after prep. <laughs> okay, Tyra. I think Gay was trying to put something together with maybe our core group plus uh Chris uh in the uh coming Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll Is there a time better than you for uh Tyra for that? Uh, even if I'm at work, you know I'm going to get on and <laughs> I don't see I'll be on at work too. <laughs> I really don't. All right. So, uh, thank you. We'll be here. We'll talk soon. Okay. See you. All right. Bye. 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 Oh, my video is still off. Hi. <laughs> hey, Liv, are you still with us? Hey, would you like to be part of this conversation with Chris Temple? Or did you just get back? Just saying bye to Tyra. No, I was just saying bye. And I would like to be a part of that conversation. Awesome. And you know, you can report on this stuff as much as you want. We don't have any secrets. That's a, a no, really yeah, absolutely. I thought um, a really good, I have a couple of articles that I need to write for Red Eye actually before the end of the semester. And I thought the idea of the term limits, especially like making the comparison between like president term limits and the fact that like we don't have any, <laughs> um, I think is a really important thing that people need to be aware of. So I definitely am planning on writing an article about that. Just one detail, a fact that the current president who's been in there for 20 years was the leader in eliminating the term limits. That's Brent McKim. All right, good to know. I, I do feel like that's a critical piece and it's, uh, um, well, I think Brent and I see a lot of times on the same lens per politically or uh, at the same uh, level on the spectrum uh, politically, uh, you do have to start questioning <laughs> his, you have to question and, and we have to explore. And, and that's the question that not enough papers are asking. And um, I well, think it would be awesome to hear it from the student voice to start with, or early on anyways. And if you're truly the member's choice, then you shouldn't have any need to uh, obfuscate or manipulate or uh, direct outcomes of elections in a direction that's different than what the masses are pushing for. And that's been happening. In order to stay in power. Meaning the Better Schools, Kentucky, the BSK, recent elections. I am referring to that. That is a, the, well, that's something worth noting in the newspaper article that the fact that the same person that did away with term limits now has a lobbying arm of which he appoints 10 of the 12 members? Yes. <laughs> How did we get here? Holy cow. And the nine of the 10 that he's appointed are white. The two uh, elected seats uh, is, is what Kenyatta and Natalie Rashad are having to run against each other. The two black women that uh, had the most votes in the first election are having to run against each other for that one at-large seat that's open 
now. So Brent has had an opportunity to appoint a diverse uh, body in the 10 seats that he's appointed and he's failed to do so. And Kumar was on our call last week talking about how these boards need to look like a membership. And so, you know, if you don't mind, Greg, this is a perfect segue to item number five on our agenda, which is um, the open letter. I'm going to skip on down to D. Uh, several people who are on this call, I won't name names unless people want to volunteer their names, but several people on this call have been discussing the idea of an open letter to Brent that encourages him to step aside. It's time to step down. Uh, you know, let's cite some of the historical things going on right now and the fact that he has uh, been in this position during uh, some stagnant times and in fact some declining. I mean, maybe we don't need to go into that. I don't know, but um, simply mm -hmm. Saying, you know, it's time for the white man who has been in power for 20 years to, to make room for someone else. New ideas, new thoughts, new faces, that kind of thing. Anyone else want to talk to that topic? If it's good enough for the President of the United States, it should be good enough for the President of JCTA. I have Liv, a I think you've got some. <laughs> you've got some articles there, Liv. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, I am taking notes. <laughs> I don't see. I don't see Brent exceeding, which does not matter. You know, when we say there should be, we should support the AG on transparency. There'll be feathers all over place because the pigeons run off because of the cat you threw out. But you get people on the record. So it doesn't matter if they quash it later. You know, same thing with, you know, bringing up term limits. Go ahead and defend why everybody else has term limits and we don't. I'll sit here quietly eating popcorn and having my soda and enjoying the entertainment. Again, everyone's on record. How does circulating this letter help us? Because I'm missing that. I'm sure that there's a way. And Very again, it doesn't journal. matter if, as long as it, oh, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> because you're right, he probably won't secede, but everyone will see that he was asked to and that he didn't. And they might not be paying any attention, now they will. So, and okay, oh, that is so good. There's somebody running against him, <laughs> which he would like for it to be an, uh, someone other than another white male, but we, we know that we, we have someone who would if, that, if, no, if no one else steps up. We, we've got to have somebody challenge him. Someone has to challenge him. This is so good. Okay. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Greg, what are you going to run for? Uh, whatever it is. Whatever, whatever. Let me text you what you're writing for. <laughs> hey, Something JCTA. Yeah, I know they have the regions are so complicated. You that, know, we have to watch out to terrible. make sure people that's don't run against each other by accident. Not vice, not president at this point. <laughs> you know, if it's what the people want, who are you to say no, right? <laughs> I tried to use that line on a volunteer. It didn't work. Oh, my husband's going to divorce me. <laughs> hey, it's, got, it's a paid gig. Can you imagine? In front of the microphone, the things that people could say. They were given that microphone and then the and then the budget and the opportunity to lobby and all the things that we've been missing out on we've been kind of told oh you don't understand all the things that go on behind the scenes and we're supposed to just accept that that's good enough all right you know, 
I think we can judge what? what's going on beside behind the scenes based on results. Right. Thank Thanks you for staying very with much. Us. Let's this meeting go beyond two hours. Let me throw <laughs> out our last five. BSK runoff January 11th through uh, 13th and I, had, I do have another Zoom at 630. I, I do too. Records item that I added just because, and I was hoping to ask Tyra about this. Uh, somehow, whenever I do an open records request, JCTA finds out about it, and they end up telling telling on me, quote unquote, and then it turns teachers against me, as if the open records requests that I'm doing are intended to get somebody in trouble, as opposed to just see what's going on. And so I would like to understand how TCA is getting uh, uh, heads up every time I do an open records request. Does anyone have any idea? I think Tyler I have two questions, actual questions. One is, do we know if it's from the JCTA end or from the open records people end? Probably both. Like I think somebody in open records is running and telling someone in JCTA. And then- And vice versa. Well, I don't think, no, I think it's just one way because I don't tell anybody when I do these open records requests sometimes. And then it'll get back to me, why are you doing an open records request for this? And I'm like, how did you even find out? So, yeah, that's a complex one. And, and can JCTA do an open records request of your open record group? Maybe. I did ask open records if there are any standing requests about my open records request, and they said no. So it's, it, it's not a standing request. It's, it's so silly, the games you have to play. I didn't ask the question exactly right, so they're like, hmm, we don't actually have to tell her the truth. Ooh, you know, like, it's ridiculous. Greg, I don't know. But to be honest with you, I think it's just uh, dirty politics and people running and telling what I think it is. And, you Old know, girl network stuff. I think, honestly, I think it's Amy Dennis. I think it's uh, 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 Joe Leffert. Um, I've, I've gotten results back that have shown that they've been copied on some of these things that are getting out. So, um, and I've been gaslit by both of them in my experiences, and I know that they're not uh, on my side. So, I think they've got people in JCTA that they run and tell, unfortunately. I think you're probably right. I, I think there's a lot of, that. I wouldn't put it past them. Don't, don't put, publish that just yet with that one. But, uh, oh, I'll send, I, I'll tell you I'll do better. I'll send you the question. open records request that I got back. Good question. <laughs> I can, I can absolutely see somebody's sister, being, uh, sister of a JCTA leadership that, that's on the phone. Oh, she's back here again. Wonder why she wants to know that. Somebody that from PT, PTA that didn't like what you did. Right. Uh, it's it's a shame that we live in this culture, but that is the whole culture we live in. And the thing is, is they're running and telling the person that I asked about the record as if I'm trying to get them in, in trouble. And the thing is, is if what they what they did in their email would get them in trouble, then that's on them, right? That's not my fault. Those are open records that anybody can access. It's not. It's not just me. So they're using it as a way to, to uh, divide and, and continue to gaslight their followers into thinking that I'm some kind of bad guy when I'm just trying to get to the truth, man. If that makes me a bad guy, so be it. What have they got to hide? Exactly. If, if it's in the open records, anybody can request that. And they did the same thing to Austin. Yvonne, you remember that? I was going to call you earlier and say, this is exactly yes. what they did with Austin. They turned him against me. I don't know if he's truly against me, but he certainly doesn't uh, uh, respond to my requests for any kind of collaboration anymore. And he was a great ally. When it feels like sitting on a stove, uh, just talking with you, uh, Gay, that you lose friends like that. <laughs> and, and there's a reason and a design. Uh, all right. Anything else in five we need to talk about? 
before we move to new business. Sorry, this has been kind of, I, th I feel like it's been good discussion, but uh, it's longer than I intended it to be. So new business. I don't have anything other than uh, sharing our video. We could do a quick video share and just see if- Oh, what do we need to do for Kenyatta? Oh, for her.